In the previous video, we had discussed about the limitations of Bohr's atomic model of the atom or Bohr's model of the atom. In this video, we are talking about the, I mean, we are going to be discussing the indexed questions associated with Bohr's model of the atom. So let's start. 2.10. What are the frequency and wavelength of a photon emitted during a transition from n equals to 5 state to n equals to 2 state in a hydrogen? atom. So from this we know that n initial equals to 5 and n final equals to 2. Uh, and we also discussed the equation for the release of or rather the energy and we did that in uh, the line spectra of hydrogen. If you haven't, do check it out. From that equation we know that delta E equals to 2.18 into 10 to the power minus 18 joules into 1 by n i square that is 5 square minus sorry n s square sorry n i n 1 square minus n square 2 square so when you when all of this is Simplified, you get the value of energy as minus 4.58 into 10 to the power minus 19 joules. So, we were able to calculate the energy of that particular photon. Now, we need to calculate, this is the emission energy. Now, we will need, we'll be calculating the value of frequency. Mu is equals to delta E by H. So, H equals to Planck's constant 6.626 into 10 to the power minus 34 joules second. We know the delta E value is minus 4.58 into 10 to the power minus 19 joules divided by 6.626 into 10 to the power minus 34 joules second. When this is simplified, we get 6.91 into 10 to the power 14 hertz or second inverse. Hertz and second inverse are the same thing. So, you can either write as second inverse or hertz. Now, from the frequency, we can calculate the wavelength. So, wavelength lambda equals to C by Mu. We know that C is 3 into 10 to the power 8 meters per second's velocity of light divided by 6.91 into 10 to the power 14 second inverse. Second inverse, second inverse will get cancelled leaving us with meters. That is equal to um, 434 nanometers. So basically what I did was I directly converted because you have 10 to the power minus 9. So when 14 goes on to the top, uh, it becomes So basically we can just directly convert the meters because of the decimal points to nanometers and that gives us approximately 434 nanometers. So from the equation of delta E which was already learned uh, or which was already discussed rather in the line spectra of hydrogen we were able to calculate the value of energy the difference in or the energy of the emitted photon and from which we were able to calculate the values of frequency and wavelength. So that's it. Next question 2 2.11. Calculate the energy associated with the first orbit of helium plus what is the radius of the orbit. So when we discussed about the Bohr's model of atom for hydrogen, we had also spoken, we had, I also, if you remember, told that this particular equations uh, are also applicable to electron i mean two atoms which have only a single electron system so by that he plus helium as such has two electrons in its uh, usual state but because it in it's in its he plus it only has one electron and there we had discussed about the equation that can be used so en equals to minus 2.18 into 10 to the power minus 18 joules that is the Rydberg's constant into z square divided by n square 
atom plus. So this is for helium. So H e plus whose atomic number is the z value is going to be 2 and the value of n equals to 1. So E1 because we are talking about the first orbit. So E1 equals to minus 2.18 into 10 to the power minus 18 joules into 2 square divided by 1 square. And when this is simplified we get minus 8.72 into 10 to the power minus 18 joules. Okay, so we just used, we supply, basically substituted whatever values we know from helium uh, ion to the equation. Similarly, in the same way, we can calculate the value of radius. So, Rn equals to 0 0.0529 nanometers. This is because we are converting, if you remember, we wrote it as 52.8 picometers. This is being converted to nanometers into n square by z. So we know z is equals to 2 and n squared n equals to 1 because the first orbit is being considered. So the radius of the first orbit will be 0 0.0529 nanometers divided by, I'll just write this properly, z that is 2, 2 into 1 square. That's 1, right? So when this is simplified, we get 0 0.02645 nanometers. These questions that we just discussed are quite simple. If you have a basic understanding about the line spectra of hydrogen and the various equations and the Bohr's model of the atom, so if you look, if you understood all of that, it's quite easy for you to substitute the values given into the equations and I suggest instead of trying to memorize these equations, just go check those out, understand them and then I assure you that these equations will automatically become easier to understand. With that, we finished the Bohr's model of the atom. Of course, Bohr's model of the atom had two ma major limitations and they were dual behavior of matter and Heisenberg's uncertainty principle and this is what led to the quantum model of the atom. So in the next video, we will be discussing about the dual behavior of matter.